This video is sponsored by bootcamp.com. Check it out for INBDE prep and use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our oral medicine series. This will be sort of a review of the previous videos in the series so far as we talk about pain and infection management. So first we'll talk about the possible pain levels from different dental procedures. And to be clear, we're talking about acute pain here, not chronic pain. In this table, we have anticipated post-procedural pain in the left column, and then examples of procedures that may cause those levels of pain in the right column. So for mild pain, we have a simple extraction or a few simple extractions, routine endodontics, as in a root canal treatment, scaling and root planing, phrenectomy, gingivectomy, and subgingival restorative procedures. For moderate pain, we bump some of these up from simple to a surgical extraction, so involving some removal of bone. Similarly, surgical endodontics, like an apicoectomy, could cause moderate pain. Simple implant surgery and quadrant periodontal flap surgery with bony recontouring. So a lot of these things involving something to do with removal or manipulation of the alveolar bone. Those procedures expect that patient to feel some moderate pain after that procedure. Then for severe pain, this would be a complex implant surgery, complex periodontal surgery, so maybe some complications happen during or after the surgery, or partial or full bony impaction surgery, so a bony impacted third molar, then you might expect some severe pain after the procedure is complete. So what can we do to manage that acute dental pain? Well, oral analgesics are the best solution to target the source of pain, usually as part of the inflammatory process. And here, we once again have anticipated post-procedural pain on the left, but this time we have the analgesic intervention in the right column. So for mild pain, the ADA, the American Dental Association, recommends about 400 milligrams of ibuprofen taken every six hours for one day, and then taking it every six hours only as needed after that. So if it's really mild, you can actually just start off by taking it only as needed. Notice that all of the pain levels include ibuprofen. And that's because NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, have been shown to be more effective at reducing pain than any of the other analgesics out there, and are therefore recommended as the first-line therapy for acute dental pain. For moderate pain, we keep the ibuprofen, but we add on 500 milligrams of acetaminophen because the two medications have been shown to work even better when taken together. Otherwise, the schedule is very similar, every six hours for one day, and then after that, every six hours as needed. And just as a side note, regular strength Tylenol is 325 milligrams per tablet, and extra strength Tylenol is 500 milligrams per tablet. Now for severe pain, we bump up the dosage of both the ibuprofen and the acetaminophen, and we can even add on an opioid like hydrocodone as well. However, note that the dose is very low and the prescription is for a very short period of time, only one to two days. Of course, things like warm saltwater rinses, hydrogen peroxide rinse, and cold compresses can also be used depending on the procedure that was completed. So remember, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, are your first-line therapy for acute dental pain management. But there are several exceptions when an alternative analgesic should be considered. So one example is for pregnant women, acetaminophen is generally considered the safest option. NSAIDs are okay during first and second trimesters, but definitely not okay during the third trimester. And also, most opioids are contraindicated throughout pregnancy as well. For an asthmatic patient, acetaminophen once again is generally considered the safest. 
NSAIDs can induce bronchospasm and therefore trigger an asthmatic event, and opioids have a side effect of respiratory depression and therefore are generally contraindicated. For a patient with chronic liver disease or cirrhosis, there are really no great options because both NSAIDs and acetaminophen can be toxic to the liver. So the best option is low-dose acetaminophen, not exceeding 2 grams per day. For a patient with heart disease like hypertension or congestive heart failure or clotting disorders, ibuprofen should be used cautiously because it can interfere with antihypertensive medications like beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and diuretics. NSAIDs given concurrently with ACE inhibitors also increase the risk of acute renal failure. Along with that, NSAIDs should be avoided in those with kidney diseases, and acetaminophen should be used instead. For a patient with gastric ulcer disease, NSAIDs should be avoided because they increase the risk of gastric ulcers. And of course, if someone is allergic to a specific analgesic category, an appropriate alternative should be used instead. Next, let's talk about antibiotic use. So the ADA supports antibiotic stewardship, that is, the responsible use of antibiotics. Antibiotics have been historically prescribed for any acute oral infection, but at what point are they truly recommended, and what should you know for the board exam? Well, because of concerns over antibiotic resistance and the side effects of antibiotics, the ADA recommends against using them for most pulpal and periapical conditions, and instead recommends only the use of dental treatment and, if needed, over-the-counter pain relievers like we talked about in the previous slides. So let's go through this table. In cases of sensitivity to hot, cold, or chewing, or if there's pain involved, if there's no swelling or systemic signs of infection, antibiotics are not recommended. Instead, the dentist should prioritize dental treatment such as pulpotomy, pulpectomy, or non-surgical root canal treatment, and analgesics as needed. Now, what if there's localized swelling present? Then the goal should be to remove the source of infection with either endodontic treatment, extraction, or incision and drainage. And once the source is removed, then the infection should clear up without the use of antibiotics. However, there are some cases when antibiotics can be prescribed here. If the patient is immunocompromised, they might need some extra help to clear up the infection. If urgent dental care is not feasible at that moment, then antibiotics can certainly play a role. Or if the swelling is so severe, as in compromising the airway or something of that nature, then antibiotics are absolutely okay. And lastly, if the patient's condition progresses to systemic involvement, so showing signs of fever or malaise or lymphadenopathy, then dentists should definitely prescribe antibiotics. Amoxicillin is the first choice, or per the new guidelines, azithromycin is the next choice if they are allergic to penicillins. Clindamycin was our typical go-to if someone was penicillin allergic, but it's not as favored because of the risk of Clostridium difficile superinfection. So let's go over some example questions to apply what we just went over. So if a patient had four premolars extracted without major complications, what's the best pain medication to recommend? So if we have some extractions without any major complications, we would deem that a simple extraction, and we would expect some mild pain. Now mild pain management means ibuprofen, as long as there are no other contraindications, no allergies, none of those health history things that we went over to worry about. So we would go with ibuprofen here. Now, if there were one of those exceptions that we talked about in this slide, then we would instead opt for acetaminophen. How about the second example? The patient is experiencing sensitivity to cold stimuli and chewing for a molar that also has a periapical radiolucency. 
there is no swelling, however, what's the best emergency treatment? Well, there's no mention of fever, malaise, and there's even no swelling. So that means no antibiotics. We do not need to prescribe antibiotics here. Instead, a pulpectomy or extraction should be performed to remove the infection and NSAIDs can be prescribed to help with any pain. So these are two examples of case-like questions that you might expect on the board exam concerning pain and infection management. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Please give this a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. And thank you to all of my patrons here for their support. You can unlock access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.